morning, everybody. Everybody hear me okay? Mm -hmm. All right, somebody in the back corner with a thumbs up, so I guess that's good. Um, well, uh, happily, Dick has covered pretty much half the slides I have here, so uh, <laughs> this could be, uh, could be pretty quick. Um, first, I want to take a moment to say thank you all for taking the time out of your, uh, of your day and doing the travel to get here at all. Uh, it was originally planned in spring 2020, and we're finally getting to do this. And, uh, there are some faces that I would have expected to see then, and some faces that I think are new since then, so it's kind of nice to see everybody here. I appreciate that everybody was able to, to do that. I know for some of us it's been quite difficult to, to get to travel at all uh, with uh, pandemics and budgets being what they are, so I'm happy to see uh, a pretty good crowd. Um, let's see, let's get into it. Um, that's me, uh, since I, I joined the forum in 2009, I think I got to be president in 2009, but I helped cause this to come to be in 2005, so uh, it'll be uh, another year or two, but we're, you know, looking at darn nearly 20 years of, of UEFI. For those of you that I've worked with for a long time, you will remember that once upon a time we did the original tour of Maybe we should do this UEFI thing. I know Andrew was with me on some of those trips. Um, and we said, you know, gee, this is going to be firmware for the next 20 years. Uh, well, it is nearly 20 years now. So uh, one interesting uh, hypothetical question that I would leave you with is, uh, are we still heading in the right direction? And what does the next 20 years look like if we're now done with the, the 20 that we, we promised? Are we overachieving? Uh, uh, and need to move on to something more different, bigger, better, or are we still headed in the right direction? I think the, the fact that we're all still here and there's still a pretty vibrant uh, community around UEFI development and that the number of machines shipping out the door that use UEFI technology is large and still growing says we're, we're doing something right, at least still, to, to my way of thinking. Okay, so get into the meat of it, event overview, that's most of what Dick has told you about, but I'm going to show you some foils that actually sort of codify that a little bit. Um, should also say thank you to our sponsors uh, for helping defray the cost of putting this together. Um, it's obviously much appreciated by everybody here that we get to eat and that we get to go out and play, and that can't happen without the sponsors, so uh, thank you for everybody that had a hand in, in uh, making that happen. As Dick explained, we've shifted to this DevCon idea. It, this is not a one-way gate, right? So if we get to a point where it's interesting to do a lot more testing again, we can rejig the agenda so the feedback you give us at the end of this event is going to be important in terms of what do we do, uh, what do we do next. It certainly seemed like, at the moment, implementation work is. Um, well, I want to come back to that one. Specification work is relatively quiet which is giving us time to focus more on implementation, perhaps. Um, and as a result, I think some of the conversations that we, we would have had about you know, new interfaces that we've just added and whether those are well implemented and the hardware supports them properly, those kind of interoperability testing kinds of uh, challenges are a little less at the moment on our agenda. So uh, it seemed to make sense that Putting more of these talks together would be a good idea because the feedback we've gotten in previous events about the, the value that people place on having these talks is, is pretty high. So, uh, so that was that was what we got to with, with organizing this. And again, I want to emphasize we're trying to serve your interests here. <laughs> um, so you know, let us know at the end of the event what you think about uh, the balance that we have. All right, let's uh, briefly talk through the agenda here. Um, this talk isn't on the list. The next thing is lunch, so I'm standing between you and that. I'll try to be quick through the rest of these boards, I promise. Um, we start this afternoon uh, with um, Michael from Microsoft talking about uh, some of the open source contribution um, work there. And we have a number of talks today and tomorrow that sort of touch on some of those spaces. And the other big theme, I think, is around uh, security topics, right? Uh, security vulnerabilities, what to do about those, um, and how we manage our implementations in terms of greatest amount of robustness and, and uh, resistance to, uh, to challenges there. Um, so 
Tomorrow we start a little earlier, as Dick said. It's a pretty full day uh, with, with talks tomorrow along those kinds of lines. Um, I'm pretty interested to, uh, to hear some of these conversations. The first one tomorrow morning especially is going to be pretty interesting, right? How many people read the white paper that came out this summer? Okay, Tim has. That's good. <laughs> uh, you're, you're all going to get to hear a little bit more about that, I think. Um, and I think there's an interesting dialogue to have around the topics that were brought up in that and trying to level set what we can and can't do against some of the issues that were, were raised in that, uh, in that context as a community and then as an individual set of, uh, of companies operating within this, this general ecosystem. So that's going to be a pretty, pretty interesting, I hope, opening gambit for a, a much wider conversation about where we want to go in terms of our response to the potential for security issues leveled at, at our technology. Uh, then on Thursday, um, we're starting to get to the end of the list of talks, um, but we still have a couple of good ones in the morning, and uh, we finish up with uh, <coughs> Vincent talking to us about configuration of the app, right? So uh, uh, that'll be uh, an interesting swan song, I think, to the end of the, the event. Uh, we're going to try and ask the speakers to make themselves available uh, on a planned cadence. Um, so if you're talking and you haven't seen this already, please uh, please make note that we're asking you to be available so that uh, anybody that's got follow-up questions that we don't manage to handle in real time, you have an opportunity to go do that. That'll be here in the ballroom, so you know, just hang out at a table. And uh, if, you, uh, uh, if you have follow-up questions, you should be able to find any or all of the speakers during these hours towards the end of the day. Um, uh, at least on, on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, obviously, since we're starting to wind down, that's a little earlier. Uh, I don't know, Tuesday, Wednesday, it might be an opportunity to get into a spirited debate and then move it to the bar halfway through. That might be a good tactic, we'll see. Um, so yes, please fill out the survey and tell us what you, what you think of the event uh, in the revised format. You know, Dick and the team have worked pretty hard to try and change the, the, the sort of uh, feel of it a little bit, and whether we like that or not. Whether we should repeat it or not, we really want to hear from you uh, to help us do that. All right, let me talk about uh, forum things a little bit. Um, no really big changes in in the structure of what we're doing here. So this is just a sort of uh, uh, rough shape and statistics uh, around the membership. We're we're about 400 or so. Um, uh, members, which it actually does include the individuals. We have 59 people that signed up uh, individually to, to be uh, members of the forum, which is, uh, is kind of interesting. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what an individual thinks they're going to get out of this, but I'm, I'm glad to accommodate them if, uh, if they want to, want to join in. Uh, but we haven't really added any uh, significant uh, teams uh, to the, the roster of, of groups that are running to work on specifications or output of that sort. Uh, the one exception to that being perhaps the interest group around SBOM, and we'll undoubtedly have some conversation around that. Dick was just telling me before we started here, that is on a trajectory by the look of it to talk about to produce more guidance than specification, probably. Um, it, it, doesn't look like it's going to lend itself to canonical specification written down, um, but some amount of normalization of how we go about dealing with SBOM uh, could be pretty useful. So some, some collective guidance that we can agree on that, that helps people formulate implementation strategy there, that's probably where we're heading with that, with that activity. Okay, so specifications. Um, we did update the uh, ACPI spec uh, relatively recently, and we've updated the, the PI and UEFI specs as well. Um, I'm happy to say that we have at least the beginnings of some inclusive language uh, support in those updated drafts now. Um, more work to do on that front, I'm sure. Um, we have also taken the source material and, and moved it out of its former home, and it's all now in, in Markdown. Um, and that presents us with some interesting opportunities in terms of how the work groups produce uh, change requests. So we haven't actually pulled the trigger on doing it yet, 
uh, but the intention is to get to the point of being able to accept ECRs that can be formulated as uh, pull requests with actual patches proposed against the language in the spec. So rather than writing a Word document that says, please change this to that, we'll actually be able to put specific patches in. The hope is that that will be a familiar process for anybody that's working on code already. Um, and equally, that the likelihood of a translation error as we move ECR content into the actual markdown source, hopefully that goes down as, as part of that process as well. Um, so we're working on some rubric for how that should look. Um, hoping to start getting into the business of doing that within the next month or two at most. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with Git, since that's the repo we're using, we're sort of modeling the, the workflow after a um, uh, sort of Git flow process. So master branch, working branches, every change request you bring in will be its own branch and we'll merge those into the, uh, the working copy to produce drafts that we'll work from and those will get eventually ratified and then pushed back up to uh, the main branch. From there downstream. So hopefully it'll look reasonably familiar. Um, there will undoubtedly be some dust and detritus as we figure out how to do this. Um, we haven't done it before, it's a new thing, so you know, help us with the construction here. We're going to learn by doing a little bit, I think, jump in both feet and see what we can, we can accomplish there. So that's more logistics than spec content uh, in particular. Okay, let me, uh, let me turn back to the security thing. Lots of words on this, on this foil. I think what I would say in terms of the state of the forum, I don't know that there's a lot on deck for us to do in adding to the specifications in this space. Um, I think we have you know, everything that's there for UEFI Secure Boot. I know there's some conversation about whether there needs to be a 2.0 version of that, but I don't think that's really gelled to anything that we need to deal with um, in the short term. Uh, there may be some work, but I'm thinking that's going to be into 2024 at this rate. I'm sort of looking at Sean down here because he's one of the ones with the, uh, uh, with the thinking in that space gelling, but we're not quite ready for that yet. Um, so that tells me that the specification world is relatively stable, but in terms of security. But on the other hand, I think the paper that came out this summer and other indications that we're hearing from the ecosystem and consumers in general is that there's work to do on this problem space in general. So where is that if it's not in the specifications? Well, implementation is, is where that set of challenges really lies. So while the forum as a collective may not have a lot to do directly here in terms of producing more specifications, I think all of you as engineers in member companies that have implementations or pieces of this ecosystem that you're delivering to, you know, that's where the emphasis needs to be at the moment, right? We need to individually look to our own implementation work and figure out within the frame of the, the standard environment that we've built based on these specifications, what can we do to make the implementations in whole when all of our parts come together be as robust against these potential security vulnerabilities as we can possibly make them. So in a sense, I'm kind of glad the specification work is tolerably stable, because I think that allows us to devote some brain power to that implementation problem. And, and if you're not already, this is probably my big exhortation to you, is that attention to what can we do to harden the implementations is really where we need to focus on. Since we last had one of these uh, um, events, uh, as far as taking in new content proposals is concerned, we've really stood up this uh, code first process to the point that it's getting used a lot now with all of the work group uh, input, about which I'm very gratified. The whole point of doing this was allow us to shorten the gap between when we start thinking about a proposal and when it gets published to the point that it's in you know, in public view in a specification that the open source world, read Linux as a big obvious example, can then take advantage of that and actually upstream implementation to match. By instead of bringing proposals into the UEFI forum with the veil of confidentiality that we have when we do that, and having this long window, you know, until the specification comes out, instead 
produce a proposal, put it into an open source venue for discussion, have the discussion about the content ahead of time. And then when that discussion quiesces, it's ready, we're all agreed as a community, even broader than UEFI, right? All of the, the next maintainers and, and subject matter area experts can also chip in their views without being part of a member company that belongs to the forum. Then we can bring it in and, and uh, start putting it through the publication process. And the intention here, for the most part, is to try and bring these things in when they're ready, as in the work group is not going to look at it and say, oh, I want 15 changes before we, before we actually say, yeah, okay, it's ready for, for putting into the book. And the value of that is the board has allowed us to make, while we can't publish material before it's, it's been approved through the formal review that the board oversees, they are allowing us to say, this proposal was approved without modification. So you'll see that in that unmodified form when it finds its way into the specification. Some parts of the open source community have told us that that is sufficient to allow them confidence to go ahead and do implementation. Not everybody, but some. Um, so it's an improvement in the right sort of, uh, sort of direction. Um, it's not appropriate for everything that we do, but for, for anything that we want to see broadly supported in all the operating systems, Linux and the open source properties including FreeBSD is also part of that world, there are others. Um, using this uh, code first process has been pretty effective for us so far and I'd encourage everybody to think about doing that as a, uh, as a default for anything that is suitable for that kind of, uh, uh, of treatment. Um, I'm also happy to see that FWTS, the, the firmware test suite, that I think its primary party piece is really helping uh, ACPI implementers get their work sorted out. Happy to see that that's, uh, that's continued. Less happy to see that SCTs are starting the gap between the, the supported specification and the current specification on the UEFI side is starting to grow a little bit. Um, so one thing I might ask if there's anybody in the room that has interest in advancing the state of the art more on, on that front, that would be an area where a little bit more velocity would be would be useful to us. Okay, and that was kind of everything that I had planned to say up front, so I'll pause two seconds before we get to lunch, so be careful what you wish for. If there are any questions, I'll try, happily try and field them now. stuff for lunch. All right, again, I appreciate everybody making the time to be here. Um, hope to you know, catch up with some of you individually as we, uh, as we go through the show. Thanks.